If you could have a drink with anyone in the theater world, who would it be? I'm Anthony Caparelli, and I'm running through my list. Each week, I'll sit down with cast members, bartenders, and personalities from New York's theater district and get a behind-the-scenes look at what it's like to live, work, and play on Broadway. Come have a drink with us on Broadway Bartender. Welcome to Broadway Bartender. My name is Anthony Caparelli, and we are here at New World Stages in the heart of Manhattan's theater district, home to my show, The Imbible, A Spirited History of Drinking. And today we're going to do uh, a very popular version of a drink that we've made several times. Uh, it's a martini. We've done, I think, a dirty gin martini. We've done some darker martinis. I'm going to do a classic vodka martini uh, for our first guest. And as usual, you will understand why when you see the show that we're going to be talking to. Um, but I'm I'm going to start with a mixing tin about halfway full of ice and I'm going to go ahead and use uh, some Crystal Head vodka and I'm going to do about two ounces per drink of vodka and about a half ounce per drink of dry vermouth and then I'm going to shake this up really really well because I like my martinis the way Mr. Bond likes his martinis shaken not stirred. A couple of advantages to shaking the drink. One, it chills it down a little bit more quickly. Uh, two, it introduces ice chips, which are like little mini ice cubes, and it keeps the drink colder longer. Uh, but my favorite thing about shaking the drink is that it adds air bubbles, which you can see, and those act as little flavor capsules that then pop and keep that flavor uh, in your mouth and going up to your nose, so you really get a little bit more intense flavor experience. Releases all those nice botanicals in the vermouth. So I'm gonna go ahead now and strain this into two martini glasses. And again, you can see those air bubbles in there, which I just love. And then I'm gonna to top it with two cocktail olives on a pick and serve it to our special guest this week, Mr. Arnie Burton from the Government Inspector. Vector, how, how are you, you sir? sir? I am fine now. You look fascinated <laughs> by be. that drink. I am, because I've never had one before. <laughs> now, you mentioned to me when we were talking earlier um, that you're not a big drinker, right? No, I'm not. I'm not. All right, so this is sort of a, a big drinker's drink. Yes, it is. <laughs> it's a big man's drink. It is. Um, let's do a little cheers. So first of all, yeah. thank you so much for coming. Thanks for asking. Um, me. And tell me what you think. All right. Well, that is the best vodka martini I've ever had. Well, okay, so it is my first vodka we're martini. We're one for one then. My only vodka martini. I love but it. But it is the best. I can't imagine it'll ever get better. <laughs> no, actually, I have had another martini um, before, and it was it, it, it was super strong. And I found I found it. Whoa, this is actually really nice. Thank this you is, so yeah, much. And again, nice. another advantage of shaking. I'm all warm right here. Now. <laughs> I just hit my mic, but I'm very warm. When you shake the drink over ice like that, you actually get the ice melts yeah. pretty quickly, and you get yeah. some dilution. That's really Really, really important. You don't really. And I'm also big on the visuals. I loved that you shake it. I loved that it was like I had a beautiful kind of color, cloudy it's color. It's dynamic, from it. right? Yeah, it really yeah. is. Yeah. Thank you. Great. Okay. Yeah. Awesome. So we're off to a good start. Yes. Okay. So the I'm government in. inspector. I'm in. um, Keep talking. So, first of all, uh, we're neighbors now. You yes. uh, just moved here to New World Stages mm -hmm. with us. Yes. And you guys are just making a huge splash. I mean, yeah. rave reviews all over the yeah, place. New York exciting. Times. Talk to me about the show. So, all right, so first, let's clue in our guests. Why did I pick a drink with vodka in it? Mm -hmm. <laughs> the whole show takes place in, in Russia, Russia, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. It's, it's a kind of a, it's a it's an updated kind of uh, it's a classic Russian play, but very funny. It's a classic comedy by Gogol, and Jeffrey Hatcher has uh, adapted it um, into a, a kind of like vaudeville borscht belt. Um, Carol Burnett meets Monty Python. It's it's so funny. I, I can't tell you. There's like, literally, uh, there's a, like a joke every other line. But he's amazing because he's able to tell the story of this uh, very corrupt town that uh, where everyone is corrupt and kind of joyously so. And then this this and then they hear that a government inspector is coming into town. So they say, oh, we we got to clean our stuff up. So, uh, but it's a, it's a classic comedy mistaken identity because the person they think is the government inspector is not the government inspector and is someone possibly even more corrupt than they. So it's like it, it's like how all that um, happens, um, and uh, it, it's it's just so funny. So that Jeffrey Hatcher, our, the guy who did the adaptation, has managed to tell this story yet still managed to like craft some of the best jokes I've ever had the privilege of. of saying in a, in a play before. So now, it, 
talk a little bit about, so, so you mentioned it's a classic play yeah, yeah. that exists yeah. as a thing in the yeah. world. And yeah. it was written when? Oh, 18, in the 1830s, okay. maybe? Yeah. And yeah. I'm sure very politically relevant oh, for yeah. its day. Oh, yeah, yeah. It was actually, uh, once it was performed, it was, um, so some people obviously loved it, and, some, and it was banned in some places. Really? Because it really, yeah, it really takes to task how corrupt the government can be, and probably usually was, and sure. hmm, still is. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so, um, so, so now when you, you have a work like that that exists and has been around for that mm -hmm. long, um, you mentioned that he now updates. And this is the... Uh, founding director of Red Bull Theater, who did the, the adaptation? Jeffrey Hatcher, who's a brilliant playwright in his own uh, right, who's written plays, and, and he also adapts plays. I actually okay. had done a, a, a play he did earlier. He adapted the book Confederacy of Dunces, oh. a, a brilliant adaptation of that. So uh, he's quite adept at um, taking well-known plays and then kind of giving them, because the original government inspector, it lasts, it, it lasts almost three hours. So Jeffrey was able to like slash and burn, cut like an hour out of it. So now it runs on just under two hours. And it's, as I said, the other adaptations of it, while it's a comedy, were never quite funny enough. And I think right. that's what stopped it from being revived more often. And Jeffrey, I think, has written just a brilliantly funny uh, version of it. And that's the thing that I keep hearing over and over again about this production is how um, intensely funny it is. Yeah. Uh, just literally like you just don't stop laughing yeah. through the whole it is show. It's one of those, and it's, 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 it's honestly really nice. And you also have a cast full of like just the best comedians in New York, comedic actors in New York City right now. And so, and I think we all were attracted to this uh, material because we read it on the page and we go, oh my God, this is funny stuff. So, uh, so you put that all together, and it's it's a it's a fun evening. Okay, so I mentioned the the Red Bull Theater. That's who's currently producing mm -hmm. this. And the 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 artistic director, I think, directed it. Is Jesse that Jesse Berger? That's yeah. who I yeah. was thinking. Yeah, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. so he did not Fantastic. do the adaptation. He yeah, he just directed staged it. it. Okay, yeah, great. Yeah. So now, when you have a show like that that exists, obviously, and it's updated, uh, he cut an hour. Can you actually add lines? I mean, what do you? What is? What is? Well, what is considered? Well, you're not supposed to. <laughs> <laughs> we've we've uh, there's a couple embellishments we've we've added ourselves to the cast that we found. But but no, it's pretty much Jeffrey's words. But you know, if you had Gogol's uh, script on one side and Jeffrey's, it, it's telling the same story. But they're all Jeffrey's words. Okay, so yeah. he literally just retold the story that Gogol had exactly. had told. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So all brand new text. Yeah. Great. Okay. Yeah. Terrific. And so the 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 dialogue is updated. The mm -hmm. all of the everything sort of modernized. So there won't yeah. be any language issues or anything like that. No, like watching no, Shakespeare no, no, is no, like, no, what no. is that? No. I like I said, it's like it's like it, it, it's just like good old kind of like uh, Mel Brooks kind of like classic comic lines and situation. You know that that. Is it, and he's just updated because you know humor changes during the year, and yeah. what what may have been funny in 1830 is not necessarily uh, would be funny now. So it's just uh, um, while it's still set then, the the comedy itself and the take on it is is much more contemporary. Yeah. So you mentioned the rest of the cast. Who else is in the show? Uh, it's Michael Yuri. He's the, he's our government inspector, uh, and there's Michael McGraw. There's uh, Mary Testa, myself, Stephen DeRosa. Um, other funny people, Kelly Hutchison, Talene Monahan. There's so many. It's a, it's a cast of 14, which you what? don't. Yeah, you don't see much off Broadway. No. Um, yeah, yeah. Um, and so it's it's and everyone in the cast. It's amazing because there's a lot of characters in the play, and everyone has like moments of like of showcasing everybody. Wow. Yeah. And like I said, it's just getting rave reviews. Uh, ben Brantley uh, wrote you a love letter yeah, in the Times, called nice. you out personally. Yeah. I think he called you chameleonic. Very good. Yeah, I didn't even know that word <laughs> I existed. I didn't either. But, well, you know. I play these two characters that are, are completely, completely different. Um, so, uh, and I've done that a lot. I've done plays like 39 Steps and Peter and the Star Catcher. And I've done a lot of plays where I, I'm the guy that plays like the, all the different roles. So, so I'm used to that and I actually, I actually love it. You know. That seems to be um, a very uh, good skill to have, especially in the off-Broadway world. Especially, well, uh, all over. It's like, because in the olden days, like in the 50s, 60s, and 70s, you know, they'd have these big casts, but they, they would never have, like, they would have a, a big cast and everyone played, like, one role. Right. And so, but now they want to do, if you want to do uh, a, a, one of these older plays that had big casts, or you want to write more characters, but it's, it's cost prohibitive to have, like, 
too big of a cast. Absolutely. So, so it's it's in demand to have character actors that can can kind of shift and, and do those things. So I, I feel kind of lucky to have found that niche. That's amazing. We use that all the time. I mean, all of our shows are four people, and they each play a minimum of half a dozen yeah. characters yeah. each. And it's so much fun too. It, it breaks really because if you especially if you do a long run, I did a long run of Thirty Nine Steps for like two years, but it never got boring because uh, I was always like either on stage doing one character and then running off, changing into another character, come back on as another one, you know, and so it stops it from being boring. It's just, it's just fun. So now, you, you mentioned that you, you, the long run in 39 Steps, you also, you did Amadeus for like three years? Well, no, no, actually, uh, well, I did it for, uh, it was my first big job when okay. I moved to New York. I was just a, a little slip of a thing, and uh, I, I did the national tour, and then they asked me, and it was my Broadway debut, and then they asked me to join the Broadway company for like, uh, for like six months, so I did it for like a uh, a year and a half. Okay, so, but yeah. long runs seem to be something yeah. you've been able to, yeah. to to manage in your career. Yeah, what's the secret? I mean, this is every actor's dream is to put together a working career. I know it's I've been I've been really lucky, but I have to say there was, there was a long time between Amadeus, what, which I got when I first was, came to New York, because I was stupid. I didn't <laughs> I didn't know what a casting person was or or how to be nervous or anything. I was literally you know it's one of those things where. Uh, a little less knowledge is sometimes good. And then I went through a, a period where it's like, oh, okay, I've got to relearn how New York works. And then, uh, and, and then I, I have been very lucky, you know, things like 39 Steps and, and Peter and the Star Catcher and, and other shows where it's, it's enabled, you know, in those long runs. And I recognize, like, especially for plays, plays don't tend to run long. And so I've been very lucky in finding plays that, that have had a nice life. And I'm, when I'm in the middle of them, I go, this is rare. I'm going to stay with it. I'm going to make the money. I'm going to save up for my house. And, uh, and that's wow. what we did. So, uh, producers out there, if you would like a long run to your show, uh, cast Arnie, <laughs> yes. and apparently that's a secret. I mean, the ones that you named are unbelievable. You know, 39 Steps, mm -hmm. tremendous run there. Peter and the Starcatcher, which I actually saw, um, amazing show and another yeah. great story. Yeah. You know, really, really incredible. Um, so these projects, do you tend to come on early in the project's lifespan, or do you kind of join them? Uh, have you joined them sort of during fully realized runs, or how's that work? Um, usually, I'm hopefully, hopefully, most times I'm in, I'm in at the beginning. You know, sometimes you'll just do a reading of a play. Someone will call you up and say, "Can you come do this reading of a play?" And that reading will lead to another reading, which will lead to a workshop, which will lead to the production, and then right. you're, you're you're employed for the next two years. Right. Um, <laughs> right. uh, things like Thirty Nine Steps had been a big success in, in London, and so that was already a set thing. And then when they cast the American cast, I was the first cast of that. Uh, Peter and the Star Catcher had been workshopped out in La Jolla, and I wasn't in that. But when they did off-Broadway, they asked me uh, to join the cast. And so it, it, it really depends, yeah. Wow, that's, um, and m m if I'm saying this right, Machinal, is that Machinal, right? Machinal, yeah, Machinal. Yeah. Yeah. Tell us about that. That seems like an incredible experience. Uh, that was an incredible experience. It was directed by this amazing British direct, uh, director, uh, Lindsay Turner, um, that was completely inspiring uh, to be a part of. It, it, it's one of the things I'm most proud of. I think it's, it's an, it was an incredible play, and it was just uh, uh, an incredible production um, full of uh, amazing people. It was, uh, yeah, it was, it was really a real highlight. What's the show about? Oh, that was a, a play. Also, because I'm, I'm a fan of true crime. Uh, it's like, I, I love, if there's a book on true crime or if there's a, 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 any kind of series that's a true crime, I am in. And so this was based on this woman uh, in the 1920s that killed her husband. Um, and it was, at the time, the crime of the century. Because then she, uh, the, the, the trial was heavily covered in the newspapers. And she, she had had, it turns out, a lover, and they both kind of conspired to kill the husband. And this play is kind of a, um, a uh, fictionalized version of that play. Um, but it says a lot about women and the women at that point in time. This is in the 1920s, and women were just starting to uh, discover their sexuality and their and 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 burst out of kind of the Victorian times. And and so the, the play is kind of about that. Um, uh, yeah, it's, it's an amazing play. Wow. Now, you mentioned um, Amadeus, your first big mm -hmm. job when you mm -hmm. came to New York. Where were you coming from? Oh, I was coming from Tucson, Arizona. Really? Yeah. Born, in Air born in Idaho, and then, uh, then we moved to Tucson, Arizona, and, th and then to New York. What makes someone from Tucson 
decide I'm gonna move to New York and audition for Amadeus? Yeah, I don't know. I, because I was a freak. I was like, I was like, <laughs> no, I, I no. And when I say that, I I mean it completely. I was like this shy, weird kid. I didn't have any friends like for my first like I would say through like junior high, because I was just too shy and I was all in my own little world. Um, but I always wanted to do theater. It was kind of my way, my mom always said it was my way of connecting with the world. Because sure. I couldn't do it personally. So by being in theater, I was able to connect. So for me, and there is no history of it in my family at all, of anything remotely like that. We're farmers from Idaho. So we're, uh, so th there was nothing, but it, it was. And once I discovered it, it was like, oh, this way, this is a way I can connect to people and be part of a community. And so then, like in high school, I started um, uh, being in drama there and then went to University of Arizona and then got a group of friends that way. And then my shyness just kind of dissipated uh, because I had found something that kind of like enabled me to connect. So um, it was always my dream to come here. I never wanted to go to LA. It was always New York. It was always to be a part of a theater. It was never really even to be famous. I, 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 that never drove me. It was always to be part of a community of people that were doing the same thing. Um, and I found it here. Wow, because you do not strike me as someone who was ever shy. You're extremely uh, gregarious and friendly. Yeah, and, now and I am. And I have my moments. I have my moments. <laughs> I'm definitely, like they say, there's there's extroverted people and introverted people. I'm definitely an introvert. And they say introverts need to um, need to like be by themselves to recharge, where extroverts need to, oh, they recharge the battery by being among people. I'm definitely one that needs to go away, read a book, be quiet. And then yeah. you can... Get up in front of Finish people. Finish my, my vodka martini. <laughs> and do what you do. Yeah. That's amazing. Did you study acting in school? Yeah, University of Arizona. Oh, wow. Yeah, good yeah, program. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah that's good. amazing. Yeah, yeah. Fantastic. Well, congratulations. Just an incredible career. Um, so, Government Inspector, here at New World Stages, uh, opens when? Well, we uh, uh, we, we kind of have our, we've already opened, so it's just kind of, we're transferring to this theater. So, um, we, we have our, we've been playing now for two weeks, which has been hugely successful here, and we're thrilled. Um, and we kind of opened tonight, reopened tonight, and then we're playing through August 20th. Through August 20th? Yeah, yeah we have to end August 20th. Okay. Yeah. Great. Well, so we have five more weeks as of this taping. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Great. Yeah. So come check it out, New World Stage with the Government Inspector, and you can uh, do a little double feature with the Imbibel uh, yes. if you want. You, show times are what? Eight o'clock? Uh, you you're almost usually eight. We do uh, uh, Saturday at two, I think, uh, or two thirty, and, we and Wednesday. Yeah, but but in the evenings at the, it's at eight. Okay, great. Yeah. yeah. Do you like making a drink? I would love to. All right, okay, awesome. Be very patient with me. This is going to yeah. be uh, easy breezy for you. Okay, Why don't you switch places right. with me and I'll right. walk you right through it. Okay. So you're not going to be standing with me? No. Oh, okay. I'm going to be here. Okay. Okay. So we're going to stick with the theme and we're going to do a Black Russian, mm -hmm. uh, which is a Perfect. really, yeah, really, really classic drink. Um, and it's it's literally just vodka and Kahlua, which is a uh, coffee liqueur uh -huh. from Mexico, actually, most people don't know, made uh, with a rum base. Uh, so really, I'm going to make the, the construction, it's really easy. Great. Uh, you have two rocks glasses there and there should be an ice scoop uh, on the shelf on your yes. left. Yep. Got and just it. go ahead and fill those up with ice. All the way up? All the way up. We always want to fill our glasses all the way with ice. Great. And then you have a bottle of Crystal Head Vodka right yes, there. Love it. And we're going to do just one ounce of vodka. So you're going to pour and count to two. That's how you do That's it. That's how you do it. Yep. One, two. Perfect. And then another one. One, two. Great. And then in front of the ice well, in what's called the speed rail, you have a bottle on your right, just an unmarked bottle, and we put our Kahlua in there. Wait, where, here? Right there, yep. Okay. And you can do the exact same thing. You're just gonna do one ounce. So just one, one two, you can do a little bit more. more. You want, yeah, you wanna get that bottle straight up and down if you can, okay, good. Okay, gotcha. One. That's perfect. And now we have a bar spoon, you can put that down. Our bar what? spoon right here. This. Yep, and this you're gonna side? use the back of it, yep, and just okay. give it a little stir. Oh. And then a little stir. And if you don't get ice on the bar, you're not working hard enough. So great <laughs> good, job. Good Fantastic. And that is all there is. That's it? That's it. I could do that. I know. That's what I'm saying. It doesn't get a garnish or anything? No. It's no, no it's Black a, Russian, man. It's, like, it's, it's you know, like very... A, it's not like a... This is a, it's a man's drink. Exactly. That sounds sexist, but it's like... Cheers. cheers. Let's cheers. see what you think of all that. Right. Hmm. Okay, see. now see. 
I really like this because, as I was telling you, I love a good tiki drink <laughs> because it's like it's like it, it, those are always you can't eat, taste the liquor so much. Right. You can't taste it so much in nope. here. It's very it's, it's very sweet and nice. I could easily drink a few of these. I love it. Mm -hmm. Arnie, thank you so much. Oh, it's my pleasure. Um, Arnie Burton from the Government, Expect in the Government <laughs> Inspector. This is a good drink, apparently. Yeah. Uh, right here at New World Stages' website for the show is... I, RedBullTheater.com, something Great. like that. Yeah, that's right. And also, right. you can get it, I'm sure, on the New World Stages website. Yeah, you go to Telecharge. Great, yeah, awesome. Come right here to the box office. There's all kinds of great discounts. There's no reason why someone, anyone could afford to come see it. I love yeah, it. And it. personal site, people want to follow you, find out more about you. I'm like a person. I'm on the Facebook, but I don't do the like the Facebook. The, the Facebook. I don't do like, I don't have my own site. People can. They'll find me if they need to find me. <laughs> Apparently working on and off Broadway forever. Arnie, congratulations. Thank, Thank you, you so much for coming and joining us oh, on Broadway Bartender. Pleasure. Folks, check us out, broadwaybartender.com. Recipes, links, drink well, drink responsibly. <laughs> Very nice. Really good. It's good, right? It's really super good. <laughs> I know. I don't even drink coffee either, and that's so good. Bible Day drinking. This is our fourth version of the Imbible. This is the very first time that we've done an original musical, but it's also completely um, character driven. There's a story. The original show is very much, people called it like a musical TED talk. Good way of describing it. Yeah, Sorry. I think so. Um, but this is very much a, a show to the extent that we can also be educational, which we always are. What was it like working on an original off-Broadway musical. It was crazy. Well, it was exciting, I think, because <laughs> it was a lot of things. A lot of feelings. Um, a lot of feelings. No, it was fun, because it's sort of like you come, you know, you come into rehearsal and you do the scene, and then it's like, okay, that night at 3 a.m. we're getting emails, like, here's the new script. And I'm like, wait, what? It was an interesting experience to, to get to try new things while we're also creating this musical. Right. And and sort of what it's gonna be, and then also learning to bartend. Yeah. <laughs> like, you also have at the to end do of that. the day, yeah. We when had a we had a woman it. ask about it. She was like, did you guys know how to bartend before you started this? And I said, absolutely not. <laughs> not even a little bit, but <laughs> we had we had a fearless leader, thank God. What is it that makes the Bible unique? How would you like kind of sum up the Bible, the day drinking experience? I mean, it's not it's unlike any other show you're ever gonna see. <laughs> you're ever gonna see. Like I tell my friends, I was like, it's just a lot of fun. It's hard to describe, but Josh, our musical director, said it was like the magic school bus <laughs> TV like show. An alcoholic magic yeah, school yeah, bus? Yeah, for adults. You get on this bus and you're on this ride, you really don't know where you're going, and all of a sudden you're in it to win it and you're loving every moment of it.